In this video, I want to talk about the future of ERP solutions. We talk a lot about how to implement ERP systems, what makes a good solution, how to do project management, all that great stuff's on our channels. Today, I want to take a look into the future. I've been going down the rabbit hole of AI and AI agents for a while now, and you know we're about to launch AI-specific consulting services at Avero. But that got me thinking about the future of ERP itself. Now, what is ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning Software? It's been around for a long, long time. We've seen ERP solutions that have been built on AS400s. We've seen the advent of the GUI, the graphical user interface. We've seen the advent of predictive technologies that are inserted into most modern ERP solutions. But what's the common thread? These are software solutions that are built in a static manner by programmers that have done this for a long, long time. What I mean by that is if you want an outcome from any software, it better have been programmed in that way that can allow you to have the software output. What that doesn't allow you to do is get creative unless you're customizing. Again, you're, you're talking about changing code and therefore changing the product itself, which is where a lot of clients, a lot of organizations get into trouble because then they have this Frankenstein super custom product that only they have and the, and the you know, company that sold it to them can't really maintain it. So what's the future? Why am I talking about all of this? I've been thinking deeply about uh, software, about AI, about AI agents, about the workforce. We posted the other day about the World Economic Forum and their 2025 Future of Work report. And it talked about a lot of available um, jobs for people that understand AI and can use them. Right? Soft skills are going to be very important. But what does it have to do with ERPs? The, the major software providers of the world will keep selling the product that they have built. And they're trying to enhance that with AI. Chatbots, predictive analytics, great dashboarding, great tools to interact with the data. And that got me thinking. Traditionally, software development is you want to go from point A to point B need to write code, right? This is a theory, I may be completely wrong, but this is my latest thinking. You, write, you need to write code to get from A to B. To get from B to C, you have specific code. But if I wanna to go to X and the code doesn't exist, I can't go to X. I'm gonna to have to modify the code or write some other code to get from A to X or from B to X. So this is the problem that constrains some software solutions. And I'm not a software engineer, I'm a novice. But this is what I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, please, in the comments, you know, tell me what I'm doing wrong here. So what does that do? If the code is hard-coded like this, and you can only go from A to B and B to C, and not from B to X, and essentially, software solutions are tools or interfaces to interact with your data. At a very basic level, you have databases that contain your data that are create, read, update, delete um, databases that allow you to do business electronically. And, and it's all hard-coded, right? To either send data from this database to the other, to send data from that database to the next one, and it's hard-coded. And I'm gonna attempt to make some drawings which are databases. So you got database A, database B, database C. Traditional software development hard codes how this data interfaces with each other. Right? If you don't have these pathways built, it it's not gonna work. And that's software development. It's it's hard coded, building pathways from one point to the other, from one database to the other. And, you know, essentially it, it's considered, probably heard this term, CRUD. It's create, read, update, and delete. All software allows these functions within databases. Keep that in mind, hard-coded. Where I think this is going with the advent of AI agents is 
there's a new layer within this ecosystem of software solutions and databases that can interact with your data intelligently. Of course, you have to train them, but they can interact with data from anywhere, from any data lake, any data um, database, any set of data that you've given it access to and trained it on how to think about this data. So with AI agents, what probably is going to happen is you don't need to hard code interfaces or even the UI between uh, different data sets. You still have your graphical user interface. I, if I'm getting nerdy, please, please comment and tell me, ask me questions. But you still have your GUI that the user will interact with. But in the background, you'll have multiple agents. Think of it as an army of workers that work with your human workforce that are now going into your data sets and pulling out the information that you need, enriching the data with information that not only that you provide, but they can get from the internet or other available sources. And they're thus interacting with your data. Now, a graphical user interface is what you see today, right? You point and click, there's forms and, and nice pictures, and you click here, click there, it takes you through this process. It doesn't have to be that way in the future. You'll, you'll interface with it through your voice. You'll interface with it through pictures. It'll interface with you um, as you would with a, with a Siri, right? And if you are a purchasing director or a city manager, you can simply ask your data. You can talk to your data through your agents. And what that allows you to do is get away from the word customization. Again, if you've set this up right, your agents are the ones doing the work for you. Your agents are the ones that are going into your data sets, updating them, reading the data, making sense of it, giving you insights into what that data means, and, and really replacing the human that would have to do that. I'm, I'm not making a case for replacing humans, but this is an exciting time for you to think about what your future workforce looks like, what your ERP systems look like. So what does that mean for us as as a consulting firm, you know, traditionally our model has been requirements definition based on you know, 10,000 line items, a giant data set of the things that a system should be able to do for you. Now, late last year, we, we come up with a brand new solution, a brand new methodology to provide that service to you. And we'll reveal that in, in, in a future video, but really it's AI based, it's based on historical data, and it cuts down the time from strategy to selection from what today is eight to nine months to about three months. And this is where it's going to, because in your requirements, you're going to really focus on outcomes. Keyword. Outcomes versus requirements. Right, I'm going to specify software requirements. And you have lines and lines and lines of um, just not code. It's, it's English, but it's like systems should be able to do this and that and should be able to cut checks. Of course, it will be doing all that. But what is the outcome you're looking for? How efficient do you want to be? What's your workforce look like? Are you, are you struggling with a labor shortage? We have several clients that are in different parts of the country that cannot find a good workforce that cannot find the accountants, the uh, accounts payable clerks to do the work, that if you focus on outcomes, if you look at it solely, uh, not solely from a software requirement standpoint, if you look at it from what do you want your organization to look like in the next five years, an agentic workforce is going to be huge. It's going to be part of your workforce. You will be managing people and robots, or you'll be managing people that manage robots. And, and, you know, AI agents is, is robots. You can call them what you want. But basically, you will have agents that have access to tools that use several different layers of AI to automatically 
give you the outcomes that you need. So thinking about ERP, thinking about requirements definition, business process redesign is, is changing quickly. Um, and the, the cool thing is that the fundamentals of the business doesn't, don't change. Process redesign, thinking through a problem, redesigning a problem, redesigning a process are still going to be critical skills. And guess what, in 2025 and beyond, the most important, most used, the most applicable uh, coding language is going to be English or any natural language, for example. The key skill will be how do you define outcomes and how do you break it down in, into its different components that you can then assign to different agents that have their own tool sets that get the work done for you. So I'm fascinated about the future as always, but I'm honing in on what this means to us, our services, our clients, and how we deliver those services to our clients because we can't keep doing things that, that we've been, been doing for 20 plus years. The state of requirements definitions, the state of what you are looking for and asking for in your RFP cannot be the same thing. It cannot be 10,000 line items of requirements and the same vendors will come pre present the same old tools to you. The world is changing. Let's talk about outcomes. Let's talk about agents. Let's talk about how we can get you there. Call us. Thank you. Thank you.